maximize our time together. Um, welcome everyone, happy Tuesday. It is our uh, regular weekly loan desk room. And so today we have Raul from the loan desk team who's gonna be talking about uh, credit repair. So some ways that you can do that in a free method or paid methods. Um, and so it'll kind of help some of your maybe unqualified clients potentially turn into future home buyers. And so um, he's going to be talking through a couple of different practices and, and programs that might be available um, to your clients potentially. So I will let him take over and get started. Awesome. Okay. Well, thank you. Um, I'm going to try to see if I could do my little presentation here. So let's see. Yes, right. you should be able to go ahead and share your screen. All right. Uh, okay. Um, shoot. Let's see. Uh, entire screen. Oh, here it is. Okay. Boom. All right. Let's see. There it goes. It's thinking. <laughs> all right cool all right so get uh, can you guys see that perfect right. all right all right so uh yeah welcome <laughs> uh so basically today uh like like was mentioned uh, we're going to be going over uh credit repair and then kind of like the misconceptions um because there are free services and uh and there's paid services and you know uh, like I, this, this actually, this idea, um, I got this idea from talking to Joel cause, uh, Joel was like, oh, you know, like we, we have this, uh, this new, uh, credit thing or whatever. And then like, like he, he didn't know, like <laughs> he didn't know like what was going on with it. And I'm like, oh shoot. Okay. I got to explain this to people, you know? So, so here we are. All right. We're, we're, we're going to go, we're going to go into it. So let's see. So we're gonna go over like why credit's important. I mean, everybody knows, you know, that credit is important, but you know, I'm gonna touch on a few reasons why, and then, um, you know, strategies how to improve your credit, um, what affects your credit, and by how much, and then also what to do, um, you know, to get to get better credit um, in order to qualify for a house, because that's the goal here. All right. So starting off credit miss all right i'm gonna i'm gonna ask you Ilya, because uh you're usually engaged uh what what are some credit myths that you've heard before um i'm trying to think um the the first one that comes to mind is that you can't um you can't qualify for anything if your credit score is under 700 is that correct or no is that a no myth? that's that's a myth okay. so actually what's what's really cool is that um most lenders uh will pre-approve you for a home loan if your credit score is above 620 and then we actually um for fha uh we could do as low as 580 credit score and then um if you're below 580 you actually still have an opportunity to get approved um as low as 500 but at that point you have to put more money down so if you want to stay in the three and a half percent down club or <laughs> or down payment assistance you have to be you know 580 or better but yeah, you could definitely get a, a mortgage below 700. Does anybody else, uh, you know, have anything that maybe their parents have said or they've seen on social media? All right, I'm gonna- it's difficult. I'd just say it's difficult to uh, take a year or so to even take a, um, a budge at increasing your credit score. So actually, um, we could get uh, your credit score increased um, in as quickly as a week uh, with with uh, one of our uh, you know credit programs. 
So like, um, and that's what I'm gonna go over. That's actually, what's funny is the faster fix is free. So um, some people think that like, okay, like I gotta pay, you know, some subscription service or whatever to fix my credit. But, you know, the quickest fix to increase your credit is actually free. So I'm gonna be go, going over that in this presentation. All right, so this is, this is the, the where we panic. The client has bad credit. Now what do we do? <laughs> All right, these are the steps. Step one, have a conversation. So, you know, whenever uh, a realtor refers me a client or, you know, I self-generate uh, the client, I have a conversation. And the easiest question to ask is, um, do you have any concerns regarding your credit? You know, it's it's not like, hey, do you have good or bad credit? Hey, what's your score? A lot of times people don't even know what their score is, you know? Um, and you might they might have like, uh, you know, on step two, they might have credit karma uh, or some kind of service where you could check your credit. But there's actually um, different credit scoring models. So that's what your average person doesn't realize is that there's uh, there's FICO score six, there's FICO score eight, there's there's a lot of different credit models. And the one that we use for mortgage is different than the ones that you see online because the ones that you get for free online are usually for credit cards. So we're not trying to prove you for a credit card, we're trying to prove you for a mortgage. <laughs> so um, yeah, so step one, you know, I have a conversation with the client and then based on that conversation, uh, I'll see which way we, we're going to move forward. Um, you know, if the clients provide a, a report, you know, that's that's cool. But at the same time, I like to pull my own report. And if they're worried about it, you know, I have ways of getting a soft credit check. Um, and I only do that if the clients really say, like, they've got bad credit, they've got collections, they've got, like, really, you know, a really bad situation. And I'm like, okay, you know, maybe maybe we're not going to go through the whole process, but at least let me check on what they have on their credit so I could, you know, put a plan together. Uh, but um, if they're not too sure or they say, oh, I might have something or whatever, um, I would suggest uh, a regular, you know, mortgage uh, credit report. And, and that way, um, you know, they might just be on the fence where it's like they're at that you know, 579 and they need one point to be 580 and qualify. So, so yeah, so at that point we do like a regular credit check. This is one thing that most people freak out about is like, I don't want inquiries on my credit. I don't, I don't want people to check my credit cause I'm going to have inquiries and I'm going to, I'm going to dispel. That's another myth, right? I'm going to dispel this. Nobody that I've ever worked with in the history of my life or any other loan officer that I know has turned down a client because they have too many inquiries. Okay. <laughs> so, so inquiries, yes. I mean, you don't want to like be pulling your credit every day, but you're not going to get turned down for inquiries. All right, guys, <laughs> that's not, that's not that big of a deal. So, so yeah, so that's, that's that. And then, um, you know, after after we review credit um we'll put a plan together you know so that's step three uh 760 your goal so anybody that has a 760 credit core score or higher uh you're gonna you know you're you're gonna get the best rates typically for most lenders you know some people brag about 800 credit or whatever you're just putting frosting on cake you know like you're you're already eating good you know so 760 or higher you typically are getting the best rates and then uh some of the tiers for credit are 720 660 620 600 680. so um the the and like i mentioned earlier um we could go as low as 500 but at that point you have to put more money down um and then you know there there are some complications with that as well but um for um like basically when you're above when you're above 580 like every little tier of credit like 
you're 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 trying to get to that tier to get a better interest rate. So so that that the most common thing to get to a better tier is just to pay down your balances, you know. Um one one common another common misconception is that uh you hear a lot that um you want to have your balances at 30% or or less. And actually, uh, the newest information that I've seen is that you really want to have your balances between two to nine percent, and that's kind of an odd, odd numbers. But the reason being is that they they don't want to see you have much of a balance, but but at the same time, it's like the people that pay off their their credit, you know, this perfectly fine. They pay off their 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 full balance every month, you know. That's cool but like like actually you get the higher bump in credit if you have at least like a little bit of a balance it could be 20 bucks you know it doesn't have to be anything crazy because banks like to earn interest right so they're gonna reward you <laughs> if you give them at least a couple of bucks of interest you know so yeah um the thing to remember there is that you know you want to keep your balances on your on your credit cards on any revolving debt at less than 10% for sure. Um, now, now the um, down payment assistance programs, uh, that's what the abbreviation DPA means. Um, down payment assistance programs, we have programs that go as low as 600. Um, uh, right now, the big buzz is about Dream for All and like Cal Hafa. And actually, those programs are 660 or better. So if, uh, if people, have a lower credit score we do have other programs that go as low as 600. um and like i mentioned again you know 580 you know below that you're you're gonna have a more difficult time getting finance and at that point you're you're really gonna need to get some kind of uh paid credit repair anything above 580 is actually you know you're in the, you're still in the free zone so that's that's what <laughs> that's what I mentioned here. So free, you know, basically above 580, you know, you you really shouldn't be paying for for any kind of like credit service or credit repair. I mean, credit monitoring is cool, but most banks offer that. Like if you have like Wells Fargo or Chase or something like that, they you look into it. They, they'll they'll probably have like free credit monitoring. Um, and so like any anything above 580 um, credit score, you know, we're basically just working on trying to get you a little bit of a boost to get you a better rate. Now, now you really do um, want to consider paying for credit repair if you're if you're below that, right? If you're the 500s, the 400s or, uh, you know, God help us if you're in the 300s. But <laughs> But I will still, you know, I will still work with you. But yeah, 300 is, is we need Jesus at that point. <laughs> um, so, you know, the, the providers is us, you know, uh, Loan Desk. So we offer a free credit repair service. You know, like I said, if you're above 580, don't pay for it. Just come to us and we'll help you out. Below that, you know, there, there, there are services on average, they're like a monthly subscription. You know, there's uh, Lexington Law. There's uh, you know a bunch of like different online services that uh, you know that are paid, and they typically are like a subscription service. So you pay to set up, and it's almost like a gym membership. You pay to set up, and then you have a monthly a monthly payment. Um, I'm not gonna go over them too much, but like if you do have somebody, like just you know, anybody just send them to me and we'll figure it out. Okay. So the, 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 you know, that's, uh, like, we don't have to get too complicated and then, uh, options, uh, you can actually do it yourself. You can fix your own credit, but I would say that like, unless you know how, like time is money and I'm going to give the, the little explanation of that in this diagram. So, you know, people always go, well, you know, I've got some credit issues, so I'm going to wait. Like, you know, I, I, I get clients like that all the time. Like, oh, I, I want to pay down my balances, you know, by, by the end of the year or by next year, whatever the case is. Read this with me, guys. Look, the, 
the U.S. price uh, home prices have increased 5.8 percent on average last year. This is nationwide. Okay, you know, depending on your area, some of us are in California. We know that prices might go go up even more than that in in our areas, but just taking the average nationwide, including you know Alabama, Mississippi, and everything else, 5.8 percent on a $550,000 home, your your equity is going up almost $32,000 a year. Then you add the principal that you're paying on your on your mortgage. It's about 5400 the first year. It actually goes up every year. But I'm taking conservative numbers, guys, all right? That this doesn't include your tax benefit cuz you're going to have a tax benefit of that 5400 too. But just very conservatively, your your home you're increasing your your equity um 37300 on a 550,000 dollar home that's 3100 dollars a month i mean this this is like your house is working like like a part-time job here you know <laughs> and, and and it's like and people wait which is like crazy like like nobody would wait if they're telling you hey you're going to you're going to get a job where you don't have to do anything and you're going to make $3100 a month. I mean, is somebody going to be like, "Oh, you know what? I'm, I don't want that right now. I'm not in a I'm not in a hurry, you know, to make an extra $3100 a month." Nah, nah, just, you know, I'll put that off till the end of the year. <laughs> like or, like no, that's crazy. <laughs> that's crazy. Like get it now, you know. <laughs> like what what are what are we doing? So, like, you know, I, I, I'm saying here, wrap up, but I'll, I'll still take some questions, you know. Um, basically, the bullet points that I wanted to go over with, with this, this presentation is that you always want to have a conversation with the clients. Um, I'll, ha I'll definitely have that conversation with the clients, like, where they're, where they're at, you know, what they think. And then after reviewing their credit and their documents, like, how we're going to move forward right um 580 you know is is the the minimum for like three and a half percent down fha um if they have a lower score we could get them approved but it's definitely going to take some work you know so at that point they would it be advised to consider you know paid credit repair um at 580 and above it's like hey we we could we could fix their credit for free you know, so, and, oh, um, one thing I skipped is that like, uh, for, for the free service, you, we, we, we could get it done in a week, but like, let's just say conservatively in a month, you know, we, we could, we could, uh, boost up their credit on, on, you know, when their credit's below 580, definitely below 500, it's going to take a couple months. It might take six months. It might take a year. It just depends on you know how how bad their credit is right so we would have that you know that conversation and then um you know good credit is uh is it not only saving you money but it it's actually you know making you money like for example being a loan officer you actually have to have you know okay credit to be a loan officer like i've seen i've worked at at, at offices where people have lost their loan license because they have bad credit. <laughs> so, so, you know, it's, it's, I know it's not like that for realtors, but for LOs, I mean, there's a real risk if you're, if you're running, if you're running your finance is kind of dicey, right? <laughs> you, Cause, and it makes sense. Like, how could I advise somebody if I have like crappy credit, you know? <laughs> and, uh, but like, there's other jobs that also check your credit, you know, when, when you're applying. Uh, you get investment opportunities if you if you have good credit, but you know. Lastly, for for this conversation, is you know you're making money with your house if you if you buy a home and you you know you use credit, you're saving on interest, and you know the last little funny thing that I put in there is that you know your house makes more than driving Uber. All right, it's like if you're doing some side hustle, you know, <laughs> it's like it's like. You know, just, just get just get a house. Like your house is gonna make more than that that stinky side hustle that you're thinking about. So um, yeah, that's uh, that's my presentation for for the credit. And I'll take any questions if anybody has any.
And don't forget that if you know you're feeling a little bit shy and you don't want to unmute, you can always utilize the chat as well. Oh yeah, let me check the chat. Hey Raul, I don't know Joel. if you uh, know this answer, um, but you had mentioned that if you have bad credit, right, it's harder to be a, a LO. If let's say someone has a recent Chapter Seven bankruptcy. Would that be an obstacle in the way of getting their LO license? Yeah, bankruptcies do affect you uh, in getting in getting your LO license. Um, so Chapter Seven uh, bankruptcies, um, you know, like typically, I mean, it, actually, most people don't realize this, but it, m most negative things on your credit stay on there uh for a really long time you know so like um you know bankruptcies could be seven to ten years and um i would say they stop af affecting you like like seriously um probably after like three or four years um you know we you could actually um with with some uh, lenders you get financing after a couple years um but uh but for sure like um for sure i would say you know a, a, a there'll be a couple of years where it you know i would definitely apply but just be be uh cognizant of like you know it might be a couple of years before they accept it got it thanks Ro. yeah yeah no worries that's actually that's why the um the one of one of the guys that I know got um, lost their license is because they uh, they filed for bankruptcy. So let me see. Let me see if I can. Let me see if I can give you guys a couple more tips before we take off. Uh, oh, so this is actually um, you know I'm glad you guys stayed over. So this I got is another question. Oh Sorry. yeah, yeah. Go ahead, John. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, I have you on this credit about credit. So 720 yeah. is generally seen as a pretty good credit score, right? right? Is there really a big difference between, let's say, a 720 to a 760 or a 760 to an 800? Yes, yes. So so they're typically, there, there's some lenders that have like a higher tier than 760, but typically most lenders are the highest tier 760. So, um, so like just, you know, for for the sake of argument, like like seven uh, seven sixty right now, you could you could get a conventional mortgage at like seven point two five percent, and then if you were seven twenty, that same mortgage might be uh seven point three to seven point five percent. So it's anywhere from an ace to a quarter point higher uh because uh in that small difference of of uh credit you know so yeah it do, it does it does make a difference and um you know like uh i would say oh actually that thanks joe so this is another key point anybody that has a credit score that's that's below 660 um you know i've, I've done like price a lot of uh, pricing recently and it's it's harder to get somebody below 660 a decent conventional rate so people with lower credit it just makes more sense for them to go fha and i know realtors don't like to hear that because you know conventional offers tend to get accepted a lot easier than fha offers but like for for the sake of the client it just it's just easier for them to get approved and to get you know uh a you know a lower payment if they go fha and they have lower credit so that's yeah that's actually an, another like good little tidbit so um the last thing i'm gonna leave you guys with is i, I found this the other day which was really interesting that like the the lowest credit score you could have is 300 so no matter what you do you're going to have a 300 credit score and the two biggest things that uh affect your credit is your payment history and the credit utilization so like payment history is like you know making your payments on time 
Ideally, you don't want to have any late payments within the last year when you're applying for a mortgage because, um, you know, like any 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 late payment will, you know, that will, will be a ding on your credit. If you do have a late payment, let's let's just say you just have one or two. Um, I would suggest to call the um, the creditor and see if they'll forgive it. You know, just just play the nice the nice guy or the nice girl. Like, hey, um, you know, I'm sorry, I, this happened. I had an emergency, and you know, it, 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 does your lender offer like uh, you know, forgiveness, or can I be forgiven for for this late payment? And you'd be surprised. A lot of people do. That happened to me a few years back with uh, Citibank. I want to say, uh, I I overlooked that I changed my the my credit card because I'd lost it and uh, and the automatic payment didn't go through and I got a late and I just called them and I'm like, hey, you know, I've been with you guys for a couple of years and I've never been late. This happened and they're oh, okay and they reversed it. And then, so now, no, I don't have any late payments on my credit. So payment history accounts for 90, uh, 192 points. So if you have like, let's say a 500 credit score and you were, and, and you had a, the next year you, you had a perfect payment history, your credit score could go up to almost 700 just on having a good credit history from 500 in 12 months. So that's payment history. Utilization is 165 points. So it's almost just as much. And utilization is what I mentioned earlier, keeping your balances below 10%, ideally less than 9%. So if you keep your balances super low, uh, one strategy I did this like, uh, um, you know, right away is that I got a few different credit cards. So like if I didn't need to use them, then like I would say the ideally, you know, if you have five cards, you know, four to five cards, you don't really need more than that. Like four to five cards is like, it, you know, you could you could get a pretty, a really good credit score with that. I mean, and and get cards that basically go with your lifestyle, right? Like if you you know, if you have a gas car and you're, you know, you're, you're filling up, you know, like get, get a card that's going to offer you cash back on gas, right? Get, get a card for your groceries, get a card for, you know, if you go to Starbucks or whatever, if you travel, um, you know, get cards that, that work for what you're, you know, what you're going to use them for. And, and like I said, the, you know, if you have five cards and you could spread the utilization out between five cards as opposed to having one or two cards, then, you know, you can like if it's a $200 credit limit, you're going to max that out right away. You know, So, so yeah, so that's, that's my suggestion. The two big things is utilization, keeping your balance below 10% and, and making your payments on time. And if you ever have a late payment, dispute it. Bingo. All right, guys. Well, we're at the top of the hour. <laughs> uh, yes, we are. Um, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today. Um, we have our loan desk rooms at this time every week. And so um, we will see you guys next time. Same time, same place. Uh, I hope everyone has a great rest of their Tuesday.